Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, colleagues. Mr. Speaker, this, the request before Parliament seeks to amend the St. Jude Hospital Act, Cap 11.20. Speaker Section 65.1 of the Public Finance Management Act 2020 provides that the Minister for Finance may, by an affirmative resolution of Parliament, grant a guarantee in accordance with an enactment. As allowed under this and the precursor legislation, there have been instances in the past where the government guaranteed borrowings on behalf of statutory institutions Examples being the St. Lucia Development Bank, SLDB, and the St. Lucia Air and Seaport Authority, SLASPA. The St. Jude Hospital has been faced with a, a, a myriad of Im impediments to its efficient operations, not the least being the fiscal constraints encountered over the years, Mr. Speaker. These were further exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic. Many institutions in our country and beyond are emerging from the pandemic with elevated risks and liabilities and liquidity concerns, St. Jude Hospital being no exception. The hospital is used by many residents, as we know, particularly those who live in the south of the island. It is also accessed by visitors and persons here on extended stay, including foreign students who are here on placements or undergoing the medical residency programs. The Iwanora International Airport is within a few miles of the St. Jude Hospital, and as such, the hospital continues to provide an important service to both tourists and locals alike. Mr. Speaker, the, the pandemic forced our medical facilities to undertake increased expenditures while suffering from reduced revenues. Working capital needs for the hospital is significant and is growing, and it continues to recover from the effects of the pandemic and treat with the high incidence of communicable diseases and other non-communicable diseases in addition to so many health issues. Mr. Speaker, the St. Jude Hospital has made a request for the guarantee of a line of credit with a financial institution to augment its current working capital. This financing arrangement will assist in providing additional financial resources for the continued operations of the hospital. Notwithstanding the ability of the institution to access financing facilities from commercial banks or other lending institutions, the legislation which governs the operation of the St. Jude Hospital does not have legal provisions which authorize the Minister for Finance to guarantee these borrowings. Additionally, there are no provisions for the state to come to the aid of the institution in the, in the event that it is unable to meet its financing obligations. If so, def defaulted on the guarantee of financing arrangement. Whilst this may expose the government by way of a contingent liability, of course, it is important that the hospital, which serves as one of our main healthcare facilities, it's important for the hospital to be able to operate without undue financial pressures and onerous requirements posed by its lenders if the situation prohibits it from servicing guaranteed debt. It is proposed, therefore, Mr. Speaker, that the, the amend, it is proposed that we amend the St. Jude Hospital Act. It may be cited as the St. Jude Hospital Amendment Act 2022, this amendment which we propose. It requires inserting immediately after section 20, the following new section, section 20A, which reads, 20A, one, the minister responsible for finance may, with the approval of parliament, guarantee in the manner and or conditions as he or she thinks fit the payments of the principal and interest of an authorized borrowing by the hospital. Two, where the minister responsible for finance is satisfied that there has been default in the payment of principal or interest guaranteed under this section, he or she shall, shall direct the repayment out of the consolidated fund for the amount in respect of which there has been a default. Mr. Speaker, I wish to also provide some explanations for, for this. I think 
the St. Jude Hospital Board, Mr. Speaker, has tried very hard over the last few months to manage the finances of the hospital. As we know, the current conditions at the George Odlum Stadium and the aging infrastructure within the hospital, the, the appliances and, and so on, place increasing pressures on the St. Jude Hospital with high non-operational expense associated with maintenance costs that is required to safeguard both patients and staff. As I've said before, the COVID-19 pandemic has caused a kind of unconventional recession with increased inflation that has reduced the financial position of the organization and reduced its buying power. If we look at inflation in the global market, Mr. Speaker, it has increased the cost of supplies and have increased by 8.5 to 32% in some cases, which has increased the operating cost of the St. Jude Hospital where it is already resource constrained. If you look at the hospital revenue, Mr. Speaker, revenue, the hospital collected 69%, 69% of its revenue from individuals who, who come for services, 69% in 2019. That was reduced to 13% in 2021 due to COVID and its impacts. And in 2022, 19% of, only 19% of the revenue so far, compared to the same time in 2019, has been collected. It's, this means, Mr. Speaker, that the hospital, that cash flow for operations is severely diminished with no financial reserves to cover emergency costs. Currently, Mr. Speaker, the hospital operations are covered by a $2.5 million overdraft which is used to service vendors, pay for pharmaceuticals and other hospital supplies that is not covered through the subvention. Mr. Speaker, the subvention currently stands at $19.8 million. I wish to say, Mr. Speaker, before I, 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 I put this bill to the House, I wish to say a few words about the St. Jude Hospital, just to, to thank a, a, a few people, Mr. Speaker. As we know, the hospital, Mr. Speaker, was established on September 5th, 1966. And when we come to the house to, to speak about the St. Jude Hospital, I think and our other local institutions also, Mr. Speaker, I think it's always important to speak a little history so that we can continue with what the Minister for Equity spoke to a while ago about our people feeling that they, that they own this country. What the Prime Minister said a while ago, Mr. Speaker, that we feel that we are ourselves, that we, we, we are building ourselves. So St. Jude, it's important, Mr. Speaker, to note that on September 5th, 1966, Mother Omar, I knew when I was growing up, the people would say, Mother Omar. <laughs> but Mother Omar, some people call her the Florence Nightingale of St. Lucia. And the Sisters of the Sorrowful Mother, a, a Franciscan religious order based in Wisconsin, USA, started the hospital. So it was established on behalf of the Roman Catholic Church of St. Lucia. Another wonderful project which is associated with the Roman Catholic Church. Patient care, Mr. Speaker, at the time was provided at no charge. So the people of the South and people who access the St. Jude Hospital did not have to pay for doctor's visits because the doctors were volunteer doctors, the technicians were volunteers, there was ancillary staff from the United States and other countries. St. Jude Hospital became a wonderful model of healthcare and its traditions of um, volunteerism and people bringing in the doad to pay their bills and the yam matutan which was valued, uh, you know, hundreds of dollars. And all of that, Mr. Speaker, there was a kind of social contract between the hospital and the people of St. Lucia, but primarily people of the South. And the sisters were able to manage the hospital. Mr. Speaker, we had some, some, some great stories of success at this hospital. In 1992, the government awarded a management contract to Mercy Medical Center from Iowa, the United States of America. In 2003, April 1st, 2003, the St. Jude Hospital Act came into being. 
and government partially subsidizes the hospital up to now. $19 million, Mr. Speaker, is a drop in the bucket. But the St. Jude administration over the years have done wonders. There have been some kinks, and we need to ensure that we have boards of management that are accountable and do things right. But overall, Mr. Speaker, the people of St. Lucia and the people who have worked at St. Jude Hospital continue to work very, very hard. Over 400 staff members at this hospital. I wish at this stage, even though I'm presenting a, this bill, Mr. Speaker, to thank all the members of the boards who have served in the past. As I've said before, there are different assessments you can make of the various boards, and all of this is documented. But I wish to thank all those who have served, Mr. Speaker. We need to look a little, a little more closely at the boards of our hospitals, St. Jude Hospital, the Millennium Heights Medical Complex, and see how best we can encourage them by giving them even more incentives. But at this stage, Mr. Speaker, the current board, I wish to thank the members of the current board, Mr. Speaker, who have taken on a life of exceptional service in this period where the hospital is at the stadium still and they, they are resource constrained and they have so many issues to deal with and they have taken on a life of extraordinary service and I wish to recognize them, Mr. Speaker, before other members are allowed to make contributions if they wish. I wish to single out the members of the current board. Mr. Lucius Elevig, the chairman, who is the CEO of the Library Credit Union. He was a former chair of the board, long-standing community service. Mr. Norman Edward, who is the, the deputy chair, a retired teacher, long history of service to the community of Viewfort. Mrs. Jadia Japia Emanuel, an attorney at law and a community activist of long standing, of long, long service. Dr. Claire Luizzi, a medical doctor and former board member. Mrs. Brunetta Williams, experienced administrator and former employee of the hospital. Ms. Cynthia Joseph, a qualified and experienced banker and community activist of long standing in the Viewfort area. Mrs. Chrissy Tobel Hamal, a youth business activist and, and, and community activist, experienced and, and qualified in certain aspects of, of hospital care and management. Mrs. Jeanette Hughes, a public financial management consultant and community activist. Mr. Lawrence Constantine, a retired educator from Choise and community activist. Representative of the, of, of the, of the union, Mrs. Popo. Ms. Ms. Lydia Atkins, experienced and qualified health policy expert and a community activist from, from Deriso. The management, Mrs. Liz Altifoy, who in the absence of the chief executive officer performed tremendous service the team at the hospital, the, the, uh, the whole admin team, the hospital attendants, the medical staff, Mr. Speaker, Dr. Sibyl Netram James, who is the medical director and her medical staff, the dental team, the EMS team, the nursing division, the handymen, the dietary team, health information team, the housekeeping team, the inventory team, the IT team, the lab team, the biomed team, maintenance team, medical maid, ward maids, pharmacy, physiotherapy, procurement, radiology, and our security officers, Mr. Speaker. All the departments, I wish to, I wanted to take this opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to, to tell you who these people are. I did not mention all of the names. At another opportunity, I will mention all of the names, Mr. Speaker, if you'll allow me. So when we are speaking about these organizations where people are sacrificing to ensure that they keep these hospitals going, and there are many issues at these hospitals, Mr. Speaker. Whether it be the Millennium Heights Medical Complex or the St. Jude Hospital, there are so many issues for us to deal with. So many issues for us to deal with. But we are going bravely forward, Mr. Speaker. We are not cowering in, in fear because there are, there are criticisms. We know there are criticisms, but we are working diligently to ensure that we deliver quality health care. So, Mr. Speaker, I, I, I bring this bill to the, to the Parliament and ask honorable members to provide the St. Jude Hospital, and especially the board of the St. Jude Hospital, with the support. 
Very quickly, Mr. Speaker, I have been preached by Jean Setlissi with the Parliament that the board of St. Jude has a lot of difficulty because for you to get the money and for the government to guarantee the money, it is for the law of St. Jude. You can get the money with the government to get the money pour qu'à l'agence à la, parce qu'en l'anglais, il y a qu'à ça, un contingent liability. Ça veut dire, même si ce n'est pas le gouvernement même qui prête, si l'organisation gouvernement prête l'agent, et bien qu'il n'y a pas à payer l'agent, le gouvernement qui ne peut prêter, en payer vie. Mais ça nous a dit assez, si nous mettons en dans la loi Saint-Jude, qui, il y a prêter l'agent avec le Parlement, ce n'est pas le gouvernement seulement, mais le Parlement, ça garantit l'agent ça là et qu'il est plus facile pour yo ça joindre l'agent avec pour yo ça faire ça yo ni pour faire nous ca bay Saint Jude à l'agent l'agent ça là 19 millions de dollars 19.8 millions de dollars tous les années mais vous ça comprendre l'agent ça l'a passé parce que autant bagaille nous ni pour faire Saint Jude là ni équipement qui ni pour changer là ni salaire qui ni pour payer en haut 400 monde qui travaille Saint Jude avec Bord la brise assistance. Moi dis par la main qui bord la ni moun qui ka travay web. Et moi l'homme non se moun sa la parce que moun de y important le moun ka travay web kon sa a dans une situation qui est difficile pour nous faire moun sa qui les yo yé. Et moi pour faire moun sa yo ka travay web. Et moi ka oui merci tout docteur, nos, moun ki handyman, moun ki security, tout moun ki ka travay sen djou parce que nous sav ou ka travay a dans une situation qui est difficile. Après d'y faire, ou sav nou an stadium lan, la ni le, si ten ka pete, mwen ka, yo ka kouye mwen na ale, glo ka, ka tobe, avec se nos, avec se docteur, ni pou chanje kou, chèk ba, kon sa, nou sav situation difficile. Mais le gouvernement a voulu travailler avec le bord là pour assurer qu'à présent, quand nous avons le réel Saint-Jude, quand nous avons le Saint-Jude, nous avons tout le support, nous savons pour Saint-Jude, pour le bord là, aider l'hôpital là. Nous ne pouvons pas situation côté bord là, ni pour dépenser l'argent, avec le passage de l'argent, parce que la loi a empêché de faire ce que nous avons supposé faire. Quand ça, bord là, ça a écrit le Premier ministre là, qui est le ministre des Finances, qui a demandé plus de support. Et avec le ministre des Finances là, vous voulez que le bord là, à chaque support. Quand ça, nous croyons, si nous changeons, si nous mettons ça en loi, nous croyons ça, venir au Parlement pour garantir l'argent de la Saint-Jude. Et avec, nous savons, nous avons un bord qui est sérieux. Mais c'est un levé qui avec ces petits millions, nous avons fait un chaque travail. Il a changé Miss Lydia Atkins qui est CEO avec Lester Mouna. Il a travaillé pour changer les choses à l'hôpital pour faire plus de mer. Comme ça, je vais mener ça devant et je vais assurer que le Parlement va supporter Saint-Jude et supporter la loi. Merci, Anchaï.